Hallå, fisker! Did you attend the festival this year? Yes. Embarrassing. For you? No, everyone else. The scrambling around for hidden treasure? Embarrassing. When I was all young, we fought over things like longest fish and shiniest boat. Not gold. Ever since that sword took over the festival running, it's been straight to the bottom with it. I heard you've had problems with the festival the last couple of years. Care to talk about that? The festival is not what it once was. I'll return things to the old ways no matter how many buckets of hot tar I have to dump. Some of the harbor boats still have holes in their bottoms. I see. Did you have a plan like that for this year too? Elizabeth said no more trouble or she kicks me out of the skip. I only pay with an angry sheep. What does that mean? Means I do it, but I don't like it. Are you a sailor? Was long ago. I gave up the sea for good and I'll never sail again. You still look like a sailor to me. What does a sailor look like? It's a certain quality. I can't quite place it. Worn? Broken? Bitter? The sea chewed me up and spat me back out and I lost everything in her waves. You are too delicate. I bet you'd not last one minute against some of the gales I've sailed. I'm finding that these days I'm surprisingly hard to kill. Well, we'll see about that detective, won't we? I hate the water. Hate the smell of it, the sound of it won't ever return. So, about your fingers. My lucky tree? <laughs> is that what you call them? Sure is. It's a long story. Now, there I was, out in the peach black of night, with no sign of shore and only my fishing spear. Then suddenly, I saw a shadow. It was a mighty squid, the greatest hunter of them all. Few men have lived to see it and tell the tale. So I pulled out my spear just a little too fast, mind you. And that's how you lost your fingers? <laughs> <laughs> of course not! I threw the spear right overboard and I hauled that fellow into my net. Took all my weight just to keep him from wriggling free, but his strength proved too much for me. He gnashed his giant beak and, well, I was done for. So the squid took your fingers? No, 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 no! Right as I thought I was dead, a massive shark leapt out of the waves and ate the squid. It was the sleeper shark, a solid six meters long with four rows of teeth. He bit my arm and pulled me under as I gasped for my last breath. So it was a shark then? No! I, I managed to punch him in the nose. Do you, you ever fight a shark? You know how to punch him in the nose? He, he let me go. I swam like a merman and made it back to shore. Three months later... I was in a wood shop accident. Lopped my fingers clean off. Uh huh. At least it makes for a great story. Have you met Dagny? Who? Huh? She's the woman involved with the Hirlik High's restoration. Brown hair, about yay high. Ah, a tough little mink of a woman. <laughs> Not bad in my book. Did you see her the day of the ship crash? Yeah, she was there, but I paid no attention to the mink. You spend a lot of time in the pub, don't you? Why? What kind of a question is that? Am I a lonely little man sitting in the pub crying over a tiny plate of pretty biscuits thinking about all the women I've ever lost and writing it all down at some wimpy little notebook? No! Then I would be Magnus. Me. I am a mountain wolf. I roam the wilds and I keep my own company. I... I'm a predator. Talk to you later. Be gone with you.
The year was 1783 when Lockheed Fishers opened and vomited fire and smoke onto the land. Thousands perished immediately into the madness, and the sky grew dark and even foreign lands were covered. We called those times the mist hardships, and in that darkness, the people of Skipbrot struggled to survive. One night, the ship came crashing into harbor. It was the Herlikai. Captain Lawrence and his crew were rescued and taken in. Once to shore, Lawrence explained that he carried with him a mountain of golden treasure. He promised to share it along with his ship's food supplies in exchange for shelter until winter's end. That winter was darker than ever. No stars shone and soon even the supplies on the Herlikeid ran thin. But even in the middle of that hardship, love bloomed. For Lawrence had fallen in love with Alda, the daughter of the town's founding family. Soon, Lawrence and Alda were wed, and soon after that, the marriage bore a baby girl. Eventually, the poison water drew away from the shores, and the fish returned to Skipbrot. Thanks to Lawrence, many more people had survived than in neighboring towns. The town's people wanted to rebuild their home. They needed money and fast. They needed the treasure Lawrence had promised them. But Lawrence explained that he would need to sail somewhere else in order to retrieve his promised treasure. The townspeople called Lawrence a liar. They accused him of trying to escape with his new wife and child. They grew angrier and angrier. Soon, a fight had broken out. When the dust cleared, the townspeople looked in horror at what they had done. Alde was no longer breathing. The townspeople carried the heavily injured Lawrence into the inn intending to banish him once he had recovered from his wounds. But he too passed away, leaving only a diary for his young daughter. That daughter eventually grew, married, and bore a daughter of her own, and so on. Today, Elizabeth is the only remaining descendant of the original Captain Lawrence, but the fabled treasure Lawrence spoke of was never found. Oh, what a sad story.
Hello? Hey, Ned. Are you still on your way? Hey, Ned. No, I'm already here. Oh, good. How close are you? Getting closer all the time. I feel like I'm definitely near to a breakthrough. Oh, cool. I can't wait. It's hard to get people to talk, though. Get people to talk? Yes, I've managed to narrow down that the treasure is related to the ship somehow, but beyond that, I haven't figured out the specifics. Nancy, what are you talking about? Are, are you on a case right now? Well, of course. I'm in Iceland. Uh, Nancy, do you know what today is? Uh, Sunday? It's our anniversary today. We had reservations for dinner, remember? I called to see if you were on your way to the restaurant, but I guess not. Oh, no. Ned. Oh, Ned, I'm so, so, so sorry. I completely forgot. Well, yeah, you being in Iceland at all, I figured. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You tend to get a little focused on cases. But, wow, Iceland, of all places. I owe you a serious apology. I'm sorry. It's all right, Ned. That's part of why we're celebrating this anniversary in the first place. You're passionate, and that's great, and part of why we're together. I've heard of getting stood up on an anniversary, but nothing quite like this. Just bring me an anniversary souvenir from your trip, okay? Oh, you're the best, Ned. I'll make it up to you, I promise. In the meantime, I'll just fill the hole in my heart with football and this pint of cookie kringle ice cream. There's a game on tonight I really wanted to watch with Bert, so maybe it's cosmic fate. Anyways, if you're in Iceland, it must be a pretty interesting case. It is. Lost treasure, a missing captain, and a town with a pile of secrets. Sounds like the usual fare in Nancy world. <laughs> Remember, you can give me a call anytime you want. Hint, hint, and wait for it. Stay cool. Oh boy, that was just <laughs> the worst. Hey, you stood me up. Pretty sure I get a free pass on puns for eternity. Also, I've been at this restaurant for a while, and the waiter's glaring at me. I think I should get out of here. Bye, Ned. I'll give you a call soon. Bye. I didn't think it was possible to be this cold. Can't you go inside? I keep asking people to fix this broken heater so I can watch over my ship. You know what Gunnar told me? Freeze for all I care. He is the worst human being. Maybe I can help you out with that heater, then. Do you know how to do... machine things? I've picked up a few things. I don't care what they say. You're okay, Nancy Drew. Sorry. Can't talk. Need heat. Teeth freezing into tiny icicles. The pub's around the corner. You could always go inside. Or you could fix the heater. Gee, I wonder which of us will cave first. So we're gonna do this middle management style. That is, you do the work and I supervise. Each of those circuit pieces will attach anywhere on this board, but there are special numbers you've gotta watch out for. Covered numbers add together to give that piece a total value. If you can use all five pieces to hit all five target values, the heater will be fixed. Hmm, you know, I'm actually not sure that's how electricity works. Oh yeah? Okay. Where'd you get your PhD in electricitology again? If you know this much, why haven't you tried to fix it yet? Hey, if I had to do all the hard thinking around here, you'd be out of a job. So, where'd you come from? The United States. Hey, me too. Where in the U.S.? South-ish. I'd just like to get to know you a little. I went to school, and then I had a job, and then I was married, and then I wasn't. And now I have another job involving definitely legal treasure hunting activities. That's me. Are you like this with everyone? Anyone who isn't paying me. If you want to write me a check, I can tell you a sad backstory and we both can pretend it's real. Sorry, I left my checkbook at the lodge. <laughs> Maybe next time then. I mean, are you an open book with every stranger who crosses your path? Well, no. I guess I don't like to talk about myself much either. What's your jam? Witness protection program? Arch nemesis. None of those. I guess it's that I meet so many interesting people, I just feel <laughs> ordinary by comparison. Nah, everyone's normal to themselves. People think my job is all glam and adrenaline, but that all got boring years ago. 
Now it's just nine to five headache involving lots of diplomacy and occasional gunfire. But you, a gal your age working as a sleuth, all on your own? That's admirable. <laughs> Thanks. I guess this is my normal. I'm a pretty lucky girl. Anyways, it's probably for the best that you stay quiet. Don't talk to strangers, kiddo. It's worked out for me. That was the strangest wiring panel I've ever seen. But I think the heat's on. <sighs> Toasty. Feels just like home. By the by, have you been up to Magnus's cabin yet? He has a cabin? Up in the hills? Elizabeth keeps a key in her bag. Talk about refusing to let go. But there's no way she'd ever give it to you. So, I'll need to find a way to get her off that deck. If I were you, I'd get a little sneaky about it. So, say there is a treasure. What was it doing on this ship in the first place? Who knows? Who cares? Money's money. It just seems fishy is all. It's Iceland. The economy runs on fish. I need to know who was present at the time of the festival. I was there. Who else did you see? Only Gunnar. Elizabeth and Soren were thoroughly MIA. Although half of Iceland is probably related to itself, so people kind of look alike. Could have missed something. What do you think of Gunnar? In terms of the treasure? He tried to sabotage the festival last year. And the year before that. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a stunt of his. So, how long were you working on the ship project? About two years. On and off a bit. Magnus supervised the rebuild. I provided the cash. And that's a long time to hang around in Iceland. Have you been in Skip Brought all that time? Ha! <laughs> no. I think the locals would have offed me by now if that were the case. I don't like to stay in one place for too long. Why's that? If you stay in one place, people start to need you and feel things about you and all that icky, weird stuff. I'm not really the having friends type. I'd like to think you and I are on friendly terms. What is this? Are we gonna hold hands and sing campfire songs now? <laughs> Get lost, Drew. Find my gold. I found a radio on board, but I need a key to turn it on. Can I borrow yours? Here you go. Hey, that was easy. Now, how do I operate the thing? I don't know. I don't have radio experience. I have business experience. <sighs> Figures. Well, thanks anyway. Later. Toodles. Did that. Still have to do that. Check. Did that. Did that. Hey, girl! I actually do have a name, you know. It's Nancy. Get your little lady bones into the prep area and get some Turmutter orders ready. It's all hands on deck for the lunch rush at the Misty Skip. I'm a sleuth, not a chef. Are you sure you want me back there handling the sharp stuff? You're eating and lodging here for free, just like me. So it's only fair to get some good work out of you. Well, might as well take a stab at it. Okay, time to get to work.
Hmm. It's out of gas. No dice. Hmm. That should do it for the fuel tank. I'm not a big fan of exploring caves in the dark. <laughs> I'll need a light source. I guess he would lock his front door. Can't check that off yet. Fish for Elizabeth. What's wrong, Fisco? You look like a giant man just threatening you. Oh. Well then, back to the thing. Run along, girl. Still have to do that. It's a glove. Wonder who it belongs to. Haven't done that. 